uh, simulation modeling for logistics. Uh, we are often being asked why, and um, that's probably the uh, quite obvious question for those who are not familiar with, with the simulation itself. Um, but those who are already faced with the problems of traditional approach, that's quite obvious too, why, uh, why simulation is being used here for, for logistics problems. Um, first of all, simulation allows you to take into account more details in addition to what I already said before, that developing simulation model is a bit easier than just trying to solve the problem with the linear equations and so on. So it allows you to take into account the real dynamics, not use, not just use averages. And uh, a previous example I demonstrated, you know that average that averages does not always can be used. Sometimes can, but sometimes doesn't make any sense. Uh, so it allows you to reproduce the business logic of your system. Uh, for example, the process of doing orders, the process of transportation, whatever. So that's uh, that that's also can be important and can influence your system. Uh, also, well, uh, stochastic characteristics uh, with the simulation models, it can be captured in the natural way. While all the if you want to use stochastic in uh, this well linear programming. It's painful. It's very painful. Uh, also, this is a. This is not a black box, and uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. There is a slide about that. Um, uh, there is a visualization, and this visualization. What is important? That's not just a picture, but that what makes your customer or you to trust to the model. Trust that this model produce, produces the right result. And uh, also, this thing is also important that you can, you can measure any type of statistics. Well, now the stop of the slide. So again, logistic, this is always space, time, there is some uh, stochastic or uncertainty characteristics, which is demand, lead time, uh, some failures, and so on. There is occasional dependencies, like if we deliver uh, some goods from A to B, then probably we have to deliver some other goods from B to, to C, and so on. So those casual dependencies that are very difficult are being caged by other technologies. Uh, also, the logistics is all, all often connected with other processes in the company, that's sales forecasts, marketing actions too. Uh, let's say if you want to organize some marketing, let's say in the region uh, of Germany, of US, or whatever country, you want to give something for free, then all the logistics system of your company have to want to deliver everything in time to this, to this event. Because what one of the customers, they, they told us an interesting thing. That's, by the way, that was a telecom company, that's why they didn't bother, they even didn't think about that problem. But what they, they did, they said, okay, if you buy this plan, we will give you a model for free. In a couple of days, they were run out of models and, and couldn't sell anything. You see, that's the, they, they even, they said, okay, we, we even didn't think about that. We didn't, we didn't think that can be a problem. That logistics couldn't work to supply enough number of models, which is a very small thing, right? So to the to the regions. Uh, so and all those things actually means that the usage of analytical methods, when we're just trying to find some dependency between inputs and outputs is quite limited, while the simulations itself provide, uh, well, as much uh, by the scope of application. So, uh, I actually talked a little bit about that. So. Yeah, so that's again, this is the subtraction levels, like high abstraction, low, low abstraction level, and uh, 
sorry, that means distribution circles. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, at low abstraction levels, if you are talking about logistics, that can be at rail yards, when you model the physical movement of uh, rail cars or trains in the rail yards, that's the pedestrian model, modeling that I already showed you. Uh, train stations, airports, again, that's basically about pedestrian modeling. Then fleet management and transportation, that's what I'll show you later too. The problems, um, <coughs> then well, supply chains, obviously too. Uh, we just um, separate that. I separate those things, I mean supply chain and transportation, because um, nowadays that's usually two different things. Uh, most of the companies do not have their own fleet. They do not do transportation themselves. They just hire somebody to do this transportation for them. And for those who do the transportation, supply chain may be not so important because their purpose is just to deal with the goods from one point to another point, like do door-to-door do -door delivery. And they are more interested in how to do this transportation. Let's say, uh, what what goods, what pallets I have to load to this particular track and where I have to send this particular track, where I have to get unloaded and once it's unloaded, what should be the next point for this track. That's a typical problem for this transportation area. While supply chain, that's mostly about the design of the supply chain, where to put distribution centers, what should be the inventory level, what should be the sourcing policies, uh, well, sometimes the ordering policies. So that's bit different kind of things. And for those who do the transportation, those things doesn't always make sense. Okay. Yeah, and at the at the high abstraction level, uh, there are models which are used to plan with for example, transportation infrastructure. For example, how to develop the city, what should be the roads capacity in some districts, what should be the road capacity between the, the districts. So they are trying to, to find out some solutions for the problems at quite well, high level of obstructions. They just use simulation modeling to understand what they have to do with the uh, transportation infrastructure, for example. And usually that's government for all such kind of services. Now, um, about our solutions. Uh, we have two solutions, L and M and Plato. Both solutions uh, are built based on our consulting practice. Uh, so we are getting a lot of requests uh, in those areas, that we to design these line chains and to do uh, transportation operations management. Uh, and uh, we used our experience to create those solutions. The analogic network manager that's uh, used to design, optimize, um, and analyze supply chain networks. Um, well, it, it does a number of things. That's just some of them which are probably most uh, often requested. And what I want to underline here, that's for the risk assessment. Because, uh, well, we are living in the, in the real world. If everything would be ideal and always stay exactly the, the time you expect it to get, then there probably wouldn't be any problem with the supply chain management or, well, and with many other things. But in the real world, something always happens, like the strike of railroads, Germany, something else, like in, in Russia, I, will, well, uh, I can give you an example. All of those sanctions, one of the companies, which, company which uh, mostly deal the goods from Europe, they they are enforced to completely rebuild their supply chain network to deal with the goods from other regions. And that was very painful for them, so they couldn't pay. And without the simulation one, they're saying they, they wouldn't be able to do it so fast. So
to uh, we have to do this risk assessment to understand how risky is this or that decision that we will take. For example, we may create a schedule for our for, for, for transportation of something, but if track is too late when delivering from C to B, all the rest of the schedule can be just destroyed just because of this small delay. That's why we have to do those risk estimations. We have to uh, find out how the system will react to those natural stochastic characteristics of the system, as well as to some fluctuations which can be like input or somewhere in the, in the chain. Uh, how those probability, probability characteristics may influence the final outcome. And that's what risk is doing. Risk is, risk is the measure, let's say the risk is the probability that this uh, schedule or this design or whatever will be stable with some set of fluctuations or some of probability. So yeah, and Atom is the solution to manage transport operations and get out of the way.